Leslie Wilson, welcome to the 25th anniversary of Eden. What do you think about the conference? Well, I think uh, Eden's done a great job and it has really developed since I was involved a little bit at the very beginning, which was 25 years ago. Now wow. we're celebrating the 25 years. And so I think they really, it's, it's become much more important and relevant and for universities generally, I think. Now you gave a keynote um, to open the event earlier on and we'll talk about that in a moment. But first, um, you are Secretary General of the European University Association. Can you tell people what that actually means, what, what you actually do? Well, maybe I'll start with the beginning. The, the association was set up at a time where there was an awful lot of policy development going on. You've all probably heard of the Bologna process. And the universities of Europe, they got together and they said, well, we need to have a say in this. And so we need to have an association that involves national associations of universities and also all the individual universities universities in Europe and it shouldn't be just those in the European Union countries it's got to be as broad as possible because that's really terribly important for us so we have 850 members individual university members in 47 or 48 countries now and there are 35 uh, national associations and they're basically where we work together to develop policy positions on big issues and try and influence the European Commission inf influence the national governments and so forth, whereas for the, for the universities, you know, they go from basically uh, the east of Russia to the north of Norway to the south of Portugal, and so it's a huge diversity and it's kind of our role to try and bring people together on common topics and to help universities deal with new topics and issues that arise. That's a huge undertaking. All it those members, indeed. you know, yeah. what, what are the roadblocks or the, the problems or the challenges you've got there? Well, you've got the, uh, first of all, the, the, the advantage is if we get our act together, then it's a very powerful voice mm. because really we can say to whoever, whether it's the ministers all together or the European Commission, well, look, over 800 universities have agreed that this is really important for them. But on the other hand, there are a whole sort of topics that it's difficult to get any type of uh, common position mm. because the systems work differently, mm. the universities are very different. So we have to be quite savvy and clever about looking at the topics we address. And during your keynote you mentioned um, uh, issues around open access and the, the establishment or we're trying to establish um, university repositories for open content. Uh, what are the issues around that that you're working on at the moment? Well, I think it's very much about the different, there are different ways, there has been many discussions in Europe around what does it mean open access and we've got all sorts of uh, questions about whether this is a green, you have a green route to open access, which is the one that would be in favour of, of the repositories. But that sometimes is very difficult to implement because researchers like to publish in, in obviously in, in, in good journals and so forth. And then you have the gold route, route of, of open access, which is the one which is in a way causing uh, difficulties in the sense that it means that, that the publishers, we have to pay the publishers to have our bundles of, of publications but at the same time the researcher has to pay to publish so there are all sorts of issues around that and we try to work with our universities to make sure that they know all these things that they're able to build their own strategies uh, it's not going to be the same strategy in every single university but uh, so as long as they have the information to to work out how they want to go about it um, as there are some very radical examples whereby uh, rectors have just decided everything goes into the repository and there's no, uh, and unless the, the researchers are willing to do that, there's no, no pro promotion possibilities, etc, etc. So there are some universities that do that, but that's pr probably the minority. What, what if that became more mainstream? What if every university decided to do that? What would happen to the publishing industry? Uh, I think that's very unlikely to, to happen. I think that was, it was an, it's, it's been an aspiration and many, many uh, university people and university leaders would like to see it, but it's, I'm not sure it's really uh, realistic. I think, uh, you know, there has to be, we have to really rethink this whole discussion of, of the role, what's the role of the publishers, or how do, we, how do we find an equitable system at the end that allows universities to publish? and allows the pub publishers to, to at least to continue their journals but not making um, perhaps mu as much uh, money out of it as they do at the moment. Mm. Okay. And I'm it's difficult because we have to get 
therefore we have to have we have to sort of manage to or try to bring a bring together our European associations so that they can come together and look at it to, at European uh, and take a more European stance, mm. and then we could have a discussion then with the, the publishers. We are looking at the digitisation of higher education. I think this is something that you plainly made clear in your um, keynote, and. A lot of people are aware of the, the pressures on, on academics to adopt more technology in the classroom or in the lecture theatre or wherever it is that we teach these days. Um, now, clearly the problems with that are that lots of academics, or well not lots, but many academics resist the use of new technologies. How, how can we actually encourage more teachers and more lecturers to actually incorporate technology into the learning environment? I would say, in a way, it's a bigger issue. It's about... The change in universities in many countries, and probably the UK has gone a bit further than the others, in, in understanding that as a lecturer, you're not there just to provide uh, information to your students, but actually you're working with your students, mm. and that it's a, a profession that needs perhaps to be looked at, considered, evaluated, monitored, as, as many others. But there are very little tradition in a lot of continental systems even of looking at quality assurance and development. So we've been actually, we, are, we have a big project at the moment that's looking at trying to improve the pedagogical skills of, of teachers. And that's a very delicate thing because it means different things in different countries. But some of the first results from, from the surveys on that is that it is beginning to help. And I think the minute you get uh, a culture of um, support and development of, of university teachers, lecturers, professors, then they're going, that, that, that makes sense to them, then will, it will obviously include the digital elements mm -hmm. and the, the, the hope is that this will develop over time and there will be also a European discussion on, on this topic. I mean, in the UK, of course, we've been working a little bit with the HEA on this project, the Higher Education Academy that has a long experience in this area, not just digital, but more generally. But I think it is a bigger issue. So the issue involves not just the technology, but maybe a change in pedagogy, it's, which is you intimated. Yes, yeah. I think it's, it's more about thinking what, what do students, graduates need in future? What's the role of the teacher? What's the role of the student? And what do graduates need in the and future? what do graduates <laughs> need in the future? Um, I mean, this is a question I think that we all question. need to, to yeah. kind of discover the answers to, and I think we're still finding out, aren't we? We're still trying, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Leslie Wilson, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.